10 years ago, six of the brightest lights in the pop cosmos were suddenly extinguished, leaving a generation of fans bereft. Some cracked under the pressure. It was overwhelming. It was just too much, too soon, too young. Others were sacked by their record companies. We wished it's over, Sony are dropping us. It was like the world being pulled under your feet at 90 miles an hour. Now, after a decade away, they're putting real life on hold as they attempt to reboot their pop careers. This is the big reunion. With just weeks to go before the big reunion gig, the bands are fighting to get physically and emotionally fit. With just weeks to go until the big reunion concert at London's Hammersmith Apollo, we're probing the reality of life after fame for our one-time megastars. With their very own brand of baby face charm and breakdancing brawn, Womanizing Party Boy's 911 became one of Pop's major forces in the mid 90s. But at their peak, they squandered the chance of prolonged fame and fortune, committing commercial suicide by walking away from their multi million pound record deal. Thank you for everything. Thank you for five years of fantastic time in my life. Lee? 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 Go to bed. And I just started crying. I just felt this like overwhelming sadness. For me, it was it was an it was an excuse basically to get the alcohol out, and I didn't have to worry about it. Didn't have to answer to anybody. I think it's uh, long overdue that we need to sit down and probably talk about all the issues we kind of had. I'm going into this meeting with the boys, totally open-minded. Ask me anything, and I'll be truthful about it. So bring it on, yeah. I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I'll give you my opinion and, and, and say what I need to say. If they don't like it, then that, there's not a lot I can do about that. We never used to chat in 911 about any of our problems or anything, so it's a bit nerve-wracking, really, because you don't know what's going to come out. <laughs> like, you might hate me. <laughs> been a long time. I don't think we sat together for a meal for about 10 years, 12 years. Probably right. What are you thinking about the, uh, like, the reunion? The reality is I don't care about any of the bands. It's, it's more about the three of us and what, you know, what we can achieve between the three of us. I thought, like, at the beginning we were, like, so tight as a, as a group, mm. like, we were working so many long hours. We didn't have a day off in three, like, mm. something like 10 days off in three years we had. Mm. And I think in the end, that took its toll. And I remember the last nine months, you could tell, I must admit, I couldn't be doing with you both of like a pair of bellends. No. <laughs> I just had enough. I just wanted to keep away. I felt we were slowly going down, and I thought, it's, it's a natural point for us to get, to get out of here. I remember doing SMTV. And Jimmy, you couldn't even fucking stand up. No, no, I no, used to, You used to come in pissed whenever we used to do stuff. And you'd be like, well, he obviously doesn't give a shit anymore, so it's like, what are we going to do? You were knocking around with a bunch of fucking plebs, you know, mm. all them. They were dickheads, didn't they? It was as if you didn't give a shit about me and Lee. You didn't talk to us and you're going away. But then you turn up to SMTV and be absolutely bladdered. <laughs> By the time 911 imploded at the turn of the millennium, Jimmy's excessive behaviour had taken its toll on the band and was spiralling out of control. Well, the biggest thing was, was just not having your two best friends there that were, you know, played a huge, huge role in your life for all those years and um, your only answer to replacing them was the empty bottles on the floor. 
So I, I just spent my time kind of just drinking myself silly. So yeah, it was a sad time. Oh. Back, back to the old days. Yeah. Let's get some songs done. Jimmy's rediscovered his love of music with his old 911 producer. Really simple. But things could easily have turned out very differently. To me, you seem like a different person today than you were 10 years ago. I remember I used to just, you know, wake up and it would be a case of, well, I've got nothing to do, but uh, in order to kill the pain and, and the depression, I just opened a bottle of wine. In the morning? Yeah, yeah. So what, how much are we drinking a day, then? Averaging probably, I reckon, probably 10 bottles a day. And you can't physically drink anymore. With time on his hands and a pop star bank account, things went from bad to worse. When I went seeking uh, cocaine, which is what I was, you know, what I was kind of using, so you see some things, you just think, what am I doing? And it just got worse and worse, and I just got to a point where um, I just thought, you know, I didn't, I didn't really want to be here anymore, and there was, there was no point in, you know, there was nothing left for me. And yeah, I just sat there with the, you know, with this kind of half bottle of Jack Daniels and this strips of tablets, and just thought, you know, I might as well end it now. Um, and it was very dark. It was very, I don't know. It just, it just felt as though the room was just full of demons. The only saving grace that saved me was that about thinking about your family and and what you're leaving behind. You had no idea, mate. I had no idea you'd been through that. From the depths of despair, house husband Jimmy has since found salvation and a reason to live. My life now is uh, is completely different. Past all the dark days and all that business is, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm married, a beautiful wife and three kids. You know, I love it. It's just, it's normal everyday life. But I think it's stuff that people uh, have done over the years that we never got to do. It gives me a reason to get up every morning and think, those smiles is just, oh, it just melts you. <laughs> Only now, after all these years, can Jimmy bring himself to discuss the darker days with his bandmates. See, we didn't know about this, like, do we? We, nah, we could see, obviously, at the end of 911, you were hanging out with the wrong crowd, you were getting involved in shit that you shouldn't have been getting involved Did in. Did you do drugs? Not in the band. I, I just can't see you doing drugs. I don't understand. You what drugs was you doing? Cocaine. You fucking scag. <laughs> We're knocking about with druggies. Well, you, well, not knocking about with them, but like that's where you went. That's where you went to get what you needed. I want to look at you. It's like Jim. You know, I look back at it now and I think, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy. Happy to accept the responsibility of like probably probably being a knob. I don't. I feel then the day if we've all would have been as close, that would never have happened. No. And I, I feel a lot of guilt. Then the end of day, it only took a conversation. It took one phone call between me, me and you, or Jimmy, you know, Lee and all that. And you'd never have done all that. It upsets me. Do you think we'll get close again? Ah. Oh. Don't you? Well, I just think that, <clears throat> you know, from your perspective, you're very closed off, as in emotions. I think you can see from just today that I am more open than I've ever been. No, you probably actually yeah. I'm miles more open. I, mm. I speak more about my feelings and stuff. I never did. But didn't you have, a, like, le uh, like anxiety and...? Yeah, I was staying up all night. I was losing the plot. I didn't like walking into rooms. If I was walking through a pub or anything, I got nervous. I couldn't go out into public. I fucking ate, you know, I, I got uncomfortable with the old fame thing. I was struggling. When 911 ended, Spike's confidence was annihilated when he suffered a brutal, life changing experience. I just wanted to be back in 911 where everything was done for you. It was the first time out the bubble. I went home to Warrington, left my mates, walked around the corner and got mugged off a coach load of out of towners by saying, oh, it's that 911 puff. I had stitches in my head and a 
couple of days later, my head just blew up. I just went green and everything. Lee had, like, carried me to, like, the hospital. I was in a proper state. I think that sent me over the edge. And uh, I, didn't, I probably didn't leave, me, like, my place for about a year. Spike's attack unlocked some deeper psychological issues. Because we were always in hotels, I didn't feel comfortable in big rooms, like living in big rooms, so I had to live in apartments and all that. I couldn't face getting in a house because it just felt too big for me, and I couldn't get used to living in a normal kind of place. It was, like, weird. I just wanted my hotel room. Spike had various business ventures, including a theatre school and flogging key rings. His girlfriend, Sammy, has been helping him deal with his fears. Do you reckon, like, the agoraphobia will come back with it? Uh, I think I'm a lot stronger this time. Yeah. I think so. And I think I can cope with it now, but it's still a worry. There was a point when we were living together and stuff, and I could tell you were down. You just didn't want to go out anywhere. The curtains were drawn for days. You know what it was like when we were out, do you know, we'd be in a restaurant or something, and someone would say, are you from 911? You know I couldn't eat then. It's that kind of uncomfortable feeling I have, and that's what I don't want. At least you think you know what you're going into this time. Yeah, that's what's worrying. <laughs> and one way of finding out, isn't there, really? I know, I know. <laughs> With first rehearsals just around the corner, 911 have decided to have a heart-to-heart -heart for the first time since they split. The floodgates are now completely open. For me, the last six months of 911, mentally, I was just completely fucked up. And to be honest, I guess when, when I knew it was going to end, I thought, do you know what, I cannot wait till it ends because my head's going to explode. When I woke up the day after we'd split up, I felt, I just felt relief. And I didn't really, I didn't really think, ah, oh, I really miss this. Not yet, I didn't. But it would come. Since 911 split in 2000, Lee's found himself battling to come to terms with the emotional impact of a serious childhood illness. It's funny because it's only, uh, I'd say, the last two to three years is the time that I've only started dealing with my feelings from having cancer, which is just crazy. Like, I think that is when my issues with how I look and people making comments, that's when it started to affect me. Lee became a total recluse. By his own admission, he closed the curtains and played video games for 10 years. Now he swapped a lifetime spent in front of the camera for the comfort of a career behind the lens. Maybe that, that tells you something then. Let someone else do star jumps in front of the camera for a change. <laughs> I just needed to get something to focus on and sort of get passionate about again, I guess. And I'm loving it, I'm absolutely loving it. There you go. Perfect. You did actually used to be on posters on my bedroom wall. So do I look old and haggard now compared to the poster? No, <laughs> I still recognise you. <laughs> right, OK. <laughs> At the time, when I had all these different insecurities about how I looked and confidence, self-esteem, I couldn't understand them, but the more I looked into them after the band and stuff, it all made sense. It's quite draining, actually really trying to put on this like real confident front all the time because that's what people want to see as well. They don't want to see um, somebody maybe struggling with it. Looking at me with that picture, I can, I can feel those issues that I had back then and stuff. And, you know, I maybe look confident and stuff in the picture, but I know reality was I, I wasn't the most confident. In 2006, Lee married Lindsay from Bewitched. But recently, their relationship has ended. We just mutually decided to separate a year ago and so hard for both of us. 
How are you feeling now that you're going to be spending more time with Lindsay in rehearsals and things like that? I guess my mind is going to be on the, the rehearsals, but every time I see Lindsay, obviously my mind will go back to me and her. We want each other to be happy and we're just friends. With everyone's individual issues now out in the open and first rehearsals looming, 911 have made their first positive steps. I think it's been quite a um, bit of a surprise and a bit of a shock, to be honest, with all, all three of us. Just kind of opening up and just talking about stuff that you would never kind of talk about in any previous kind of meetings or... It's, it's obvious, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Mm. That spark is there. You know it. You can feel it. Being together with you, but you can feel that we're ready to fucking go again. I think the fans want to see us doing... Whenever they come and see us back in the day doing a live tour, they want to see us doing that again. And it's like, we're 40 year old, who cares? Let's just do exactly what we used to do back then and show that we can still do it. Cheers for being fucked up. Hey, I think we are fucked up actually, but do you know what? Who gives a shit? <laughs>